everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and tonight it's Watercolor Wednesday where I'm going to show you live how to turn this acrylic painting into a watercolor painting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. As I explain the process of creating this design in watercolor step by step so you can paint along with me at home, uh, John's going to make sure that the cameras are pointing at the colors that I'm mixing and the techniques that I am describing. You can paint along with any colors that you have. I'll tell you what I'm using and then I'll kind of let you know what you would be wanting to look for on your own palette in your own like paint mix. So you could be using those like little round cake pans or tube paints or my regular colors, anything. You'd be able to paint along. And we're going to make a swatch card um, coming up here really soon to make those exchanges even easier. I've got one set going right now on my Wednesday watercolor blog. Um, today I'm going to be testing again the Viviva because as you guys know, I'm looking at maybe making a custom set for myself. And I need to make sure that they are all the sauces of awesome. Uh-huh. Right? What the ups and the downs and sideways and lefts and rights are. And since they sent me these little pan watercolors, I'm going to test them too. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Really good. I was just making sure we got all our stuff over here. I see I see Ashley and Tanya and Amy and I uh, see Staline is here. Jen is here. We don't have <coughs> our normal chit-chatty windows for cinnamon. Right. And so. if you're on Facebook, we, we are here with you. We've got moderators in there with you. Um, my screen went out that I get to see chat even from. It's broken. So it'll, it, this is not like Acrylic April where we have to produce that show ahead of time and stream it on the live system. This is live, live, live. So things could go wrong. Could be mayhem. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of, let's talk about materials. Today I'm going to use my very favorite... Fabriano watercolor paper, 100% cold pressed, 140 pound on a block. That is my favorite for a whole bunch of reasons. A lot of which is that it's very beginner friendly, not necessarily on the pocketbook, but on your experience. Anytime you get a, a cold pressed watercolor block at 140 pounds, you're going to have a better experience because it will restretch the paper. So even if it wefts a little bit, it'll go back to flat. Ah, uh, it wefts. I'm also going to not use frisket or go crazy preserving my white. I'm just going to come back with some fluid acrylic at the end and put my white back. Ah. I'm going to be sporting the Viviva color sheets and the spring palette. I'm officially an ambassador. Do you feel like I'm representing, ambassadoring? Yeah. I'm, says I'm also seriously testing. <laughs> Beth says she's here for acrylic April to watercolors. From acrylic a April to, to watercolor. From A to, we're doing the things. From A to W. Now, I am working on some watercolor classes that are a little more in depth, that are going to be a little more produced that you guys can watch. But this is, let's enjoy this time together. I think it's fun. I think it's enjoyable. And let's begin with the tape trick. So we're, uh, John's got picture in picture for you guys, which I is do. the painting that I did. This um one? Yeah. The traceable for this will work for the watercolor. Can you Let's scoot it in the middle a little? Convenient. I could. Yeah, okay. You want it? Just smidged. Smidged. Here? No, stop Here? it. Stop it. Let's cover the water cup. <laughs> and a little smaller, just so you can see it. You guys can get this from the website. There's even a step-by-step -step infographic you can print out. There's a mini book you can print out for the acrylic class. If you're doing acrylic April with me, you'll be like, oh, look how this is different. And then I'll update the thumbnail at the end so you can see, oh, that's what it looked like acrylic. That's what it looks like watercolor. But I'm still going to start out with my tape and a pencil. This is the same pencil I use in my drawing class for patrons. It's a 6B. I don't think it's really important what pencil it is. It could be an HB pencil. It's just the one I grabbed. And I am going to draw my butterfly in. Now, in a watercolor one of the things that you will figure out pretty quick is that the drawing in watercolor is a little more involved mm. than the drawing in acrylic or oil painting oil painting can be actually quite technical but acrylic is usually pretty loose and uh, that's just because the way things layer up and then we don't do grisaille that often there's a there's a couple of reasons for that i'm going to kind of turn my paper a little bit and that's just so that my wings are symmetrical i see rahil rahil hey all right, let's come up over here, up equally on both sides if we can. All right, yeah, I think come up Ashley. there. Ashley was saying she's used lots of your traceables for watercolors. Oh, yeah, the traceables for acrylics absolutely work for watercolors. Totally. Traceable is a traceable is a traceable by any other name. That's a YouTube channel I'd subscribe to. Uh, I'm just having a good day. 
I got a shout out from a, a fairly large creator and um, it was really unexpected and in an area I didn't know I needed one. Yeah. Um, it's kind of in a good bomb area, which I didn't realize I've been just kind of needing a good bomb pat on the back lately. It was you, you know how sometimes you need those as a mom. And it was one and I was just like, man, you know, it. I wasn't looking for it, but now that it's here, I really am appreciative and I'm so grateful that Ashley saw that because, uh, man, I just teared up and I was like, that Ooh. just made my day. Thank you, Tammy. She shared the link because we got this cool uh, Viviva affiliate link. We do. If so you'd like to buy a Viviva. If you buy the Viviva thing from them, then we get a kickback. We do. We get a kickback. We Some benefit from the link. Earthling doolars to pay the bills with. You don't have to have the Viviva color sheets to do this lesson, no. no. Does. <laughs> Not by any means. Now, I'm going to, on the butterfly, I'm going to do um, a little line and wash. So I'll use my uh, Faber and Castell pen here. And I'm going to just do a little bit of kind of detailing in on him. Making little short lines. I don't know if John can kind of get in there and see this. Um, I can a little bit, but you, you tend to lean to your right when you're doing that. So that uh, one of I lean to my left. Okay, well then I can do this. <laughs> it's not my right, that's my left. I'm sure it looks like my right on the camera. And look, I can go. You can always just like lean over. I do tend to have a lean when I'm trying to see what I'm doing. It's, I may have to. See that, that camera is a little brighter. By uh, doing the butterfly with a little bit of ink, um, it's kind of nice because it allows me to get some sharp, crispy little details. And then I can paint very loosely with the watercolor. There we go. And this is me totally leaning the other way. You did it. And that doesn't mean that I won't use the black or, you know, dark colors on there. Just This is just a nice way to kind of get a handle on it. I like it. Maybe you likes it too. Um, Faber-Castell, uh, the pen that comes in the travel kit over at Viviva, those are both waterproof pens. Why am I not using the one in the travel kit? Because it was just a little out of reach and I got super lazy. <laughs> and my other ones are right here. Huh. So sometimes I'll use something because it's better, and sometimes I use something because it's more in arm's reach. I don't know if you guys ever have moments like that, but I have more than a few. I have moments. You have moments? Most of my moments. Most of your moments? Are momentary. Most of your moments are momentary. But there's a few that are not. So uh, I want to give some hugs to the moms and dads out there to say parenting. It's not, it's not a small job. I want to send, send you guys some love, you caregivers and parents. For your momentary moments. Man, we go into this super untrained. Yeah. We do. <laughs> we do. We enter, maybe some of you got trained. I'm going to make little lines here, but I was not trained. Much of being a parent has, has been a kind of learn as you go, make it as you go kind of thing for me. <laughs> And now I've told my kids that they have to take some child development in college if they want me to help out with school. And they're like, but we don't want kids. I'm like, but you're going to know some, even if they're not yours. You should know what a huge portion of the population is up to. I'm with Splendor. I'm excited to see this one in watercolor. Yeah, no, this is going to be real pretty today. So I've done my little butterfly there. And that's going to make a lot of this really uh, nice. But I'm actually not going to uh, black line or draw out everything. Isn't not. that interesting? I'm not. I cannot believe. I know. It's just, it's a surprise, but it's true. I think I will start out with my Viviva, and I'm going to go to my chrome yellow to begin. The chrome yellow on the Art Sherpa colors is really like the Nickel Ozo yellow. Um, Hansa yellow is just a little brighter than this, a little more green biased. So, um, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to get my brush this is the escoda travel brush it's like um it's a number 12. And i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna pre-wet a leaf come into the little sleeve here so you're i'm gonna two. brush out Ooh. a little leaf stroke i bet you never seen it. we're gonna paint leaves without drawing them what Crazy. i i think you're two sheets to the chrome i'm two sheets to the chroma 
just kind of enjoying this. Yeah, I'll probably put a little pigment on the next one, but I'm doing it pretty light. And I'm sort of just pressing down and releasing. You guys seeing that? I am. Facebook says no. Facebook said no? It always says no when I go live. It thinks that I can't use the page until I'm done going live. <laughs> it's like you and the page get nothing. Now, since <laughs> I've done this up here, right, I'm going to want to make some leaves down below just to keep my balance going. So I'm going to come down here, press, come down and release, and try to do about the same length. Isn't that fun? It is. Fun for me anyways. Maybe a little bit wet there. Come here to the side. Just kind of filling those in. Be interesting to see how this goes. I haven't done this in a, in a minute. This sort of very loose paint it and hope it works out process. Oh. I'm going to so just... Gonna... I'm going to answer a question here in chat. Okay. Help. So, uh, Rahil, in, in, in chat, they were talking about a Chia Pet. And so if you're not from America, you will not know what a Chia Pet is, probably. Um, there may be some other countries. I mean, it, but I'm, I, I would hope they're global. I, I what don't a think weird so. thing. I don't, uh, yeah. But so just in case, I'm pretty sure you haven't got it. So it's a, it's a pottery thing that you spread uh seeds on and then water it and it holds the water inside the pottery little terracotta pottery and then the seeds grow and they root into the terracotta and they make cute little shapes and so they've done those uh he little bust heads of many different people and little shapes and you can get fishes and sheeps sheeps so i have to kind of paint around the butterfly and then that's a little bit of a challenge painting around the butterfly, but I'm okay. I can do it. Now, when I have all that sort of in, I can come in and really fill in okay. Come here, press down. Maybe curl that leaf. Oh, I got tricky there, didn't I? Chia seeds. That's what they are. That's chia seeds. Chia pet. You can eat them. Chia seeds, I think, can't you? Yeah. Well, see, I think what it was is that... Your type of sprout? Yeah. Some, someone was saying, whenever you say v -v viva. They think of the ch 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 chia. And so Interestingly enough, Rahil, Viviva is a company based out of India. It was invented by, uh, 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 I, I believe he was going through medical school. And he was just trying to figure out how to paint um, while studying. And I took part in the uh, crowd funder. I was like, I was, he said the idea to me and said, I'll send you one. I was like, this is the coolest idea. Yeah, I'm about it. Let's go. Game. Game. And I've been really happy with having done that ever since. Yeah. So sometimes I get it and it's a little bit of a dry brush. And you'll notice what I do to vary up the colors of my paddles is I... Um, you know what we can't see? Hmm. We can't see how moist you're making it because the referency picture here is in the way. So let's move that over here. Oh, no. You wouldn't be able to see it anyways. But yeah, you can move it over there. You mean how moist am I making the brush? Right, because they can't um, you, see you. You don't really it. see it. So it's a full swish, and I'm not really dragging off but a drop of extra water. Well, let's make some more room. For so it's a full swish. Swish dipping. Drop of extra water. Look, see? I don't know where the little drop of green came from, but sometimes I just go with things. How about that? Now you can see the dipping. I'm saying just a little dip and a drop of extra water. So what is problematic about the Viviva sheets is they're not totally and utterly light fast, but that village I painted a minute ago hasn't faded at all. I'm going to kind of fill this in a little bit because I want it to be solid yellow. Let's come put some over here. I'm having fun with it. Just letting them be. They're quite bright yellow. And I haven't even gotten layer two on here. It's 
fun for me. Huh. Reading up in the chat here. So. Now, where I have to come back into the butterfly, sometimes I come in the opposite way just so I have more control. If you guys can understand that as I go around him. All right, so we're there. This is, again, it's kind of like the nickel ozo yellow in our set. It's just got a little bit more of an orange bias or a warm bias to it. I think uh, it'd be a little bit like cad yellow deep in acrylic. Need to go back the other way. So down here in the press... I only have a little bit to fill in there. You're discussing the nature of pink in cherry trees. Pink has, there are many pinks in cherry trees. And, but, and, and so what Rahi was saying, he's never seen cherry blossoms. And were they actually pink? Someone Sometimes. Else was saying, yeah, for a short period of time, they are pink. And it, again, it depends on what kind of cherry blossom tree you're talking about, because there's different kind of cherry blossom trees. So I was like, wow, there's a lot of education happening about cherry blossom trees. In I mean... Chat. Weeping cherry trees. Bloom where you were planted, right? <laughs> Bloom where you are planted. I love it. So now I have, you know, some choices here. I also have some orange that I can play with. There's the dusk orange, and I think I might want to play with that dusk orange. You have no choice. We live in a deterministic universe. It's not deterministic. Not to start something. It's not deterministic. <laughs> you know it's not. Ah. <laughs> I'm just adding some little layering on the petals, right? Maybe I'll come over here and get a little bit of that orange. I'm going to get some of this yellow that's in that spring palette. Look, I just another level. All right, you might be mixing your Hansa yellow with a little bit of your pyral orange if you're painting the palette. A normal. Let's see how the next layer creates another layer of petals. It's fun stuff. Well, maybe I'll come into my yellow ochre, right? That's a fun color and kind of tint that. Thin it with some water and now we're going to get like into it. Painting little sunflowers. Now that I painted near the butterfly, I can be a little more playful with some of these outward strokes. Ah. Looks really, I don't know how it is on your screen. It looks blown out on my screen again, but I don't know if it is because sometimes it looks blown out. I'm using, no, it's not. Let's see which one am I using. I'm using the Bees Yellow, which is like the Hansa Yellow. Bees Yellow is pretty much like a Hansa Yellow. Nope, it's a little more orange than that. Where did I make? Oh, no, I think what it is is I got some orange in it. It is more like a Hansa Yellow. Having fun there. You guys having fun? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to come here in the center. Paint very carefully. I might get clean water. Not that it has to be perfectly clean, but I just have a lot of pigment in the water and I can tell. Helps with yellow. It can help with yellow. We're going to be going into some browns, but still. Sneaky green. Sneaky green. So the mystery I'm going to be solving right after the show is where the little flecks of green came from. Because <laughs> I just pulled a sheet off this pad, and I'm like, I don't know what was on my hands or what was going on, but obviously something Bad was a going green. on. All right, so we've got burnt umber, and I think I'm going to start with my burnt sienna and then maybe get into my burnt umber. You 
you know, the question hmm. is always asked. Who burnt the umber and why? Who burnt, well, the haymaker burnt the umber. Did they not find pre-burnt umber and discover that umber should be burnt? Or so it since a... it's the oldest paint color and we do have some prehistoric paint boxes, we can kind of guess, but this actually we can, don't know. This knowledge is, is there, but we don't. We don't know. really know it. I'm going to come into my burnt umber now. So what came first, the burnt umber or the umber? Kind of do a dark little center. I get a little burnt umber. Mm, I mean, we'll look at it. We'll compare it into the thumbnail. I couldn't hear her question. Will it be brighter than the acrylic? Oh. Someone's asking if it will be brighter than the acrylic. And that's hard to say. Hard to say. I'm going to get over here and I'm going to get into my, I'm going to do something shocking. I think I'm going to get into my peacock blue. It's an unexpected little moment. It's just something I can do because this is watercolor. I can be a little more playful in my colors. So that'll be like a phthalo blue. Mm. And I'm just working it right on directly into the paint and allowing them to kind of work together. And this is going to be loose wet into wet. So the surface is wet, the paint is wet, everything I'm working is a little bit wet. And that's going to, you know, kind of soften and continue to blend and bloom out. And I'm going to allow it to do that. I'm going to get into that. Now, while this is having a little quiet moment and thinking about what it's done. Be quiet. Think about what you've done. <laughs> I think I'm going to get into my sap green here and come over to uh, maybe where I have a little of my yellow. See that? I do. Mix I a little bit it, of this yellow believe. into the sap green. This would be like the Hansi yellow into, I think if you had uh, the nickel azo and the phthalo green together, you'd get into something kind of compatible. I'm going to come along and kind of create some leaf detailing. What do you all think of that? I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. So you can make little long strokes. So we're just picking up detailed leaves. A little bit in the green. And while we're picking up detailed leaves, it's allowing all this to dry and blend and bloom. Sometimes in watercolor, you have to just walk away and do something else. Well, it rests. Yeah, well, it rests. But sometimes you can paint real fast and expressively like this. And you just work different areas of the canvas while other areas of the canvas are resolving themselves. You know, as we create little areas around these leaves. Maybe I'll grab a little bit of that same basic green from over here.
You can go in from where the rust is and like pull that out and in from where the blue is and pull that into the leaf too. It's interesting. You're just sort of drawing the color out. Draw the color out. Draw that color out. And Darcy, uh, I'm doing this a lot bigger than it needs to so be done. Did, when, you painted this before. Yes. And what did you paint it in? Acrylic. And where would they find that? On the Art Sherpa uh, channel. Uh, I have two channels. I have the Art Sherpa watercolor channel, which you already had here. And then I have an acrylic channel, the Art Sherpa. And over on that one, uh, it's part of something called Acrylic April, where we paint a new flower every day for 30 days. Ah. Every day for 30 days. You guys, me, everybody. <laughs> We're doing it. Let's get some more of that um, sap green over there. I just added some brown into that because I just wanted it to be a little deeper. There, it's continuing to like just settle and... You could do this small or big. Oh yeah, that's some... There were several folks have seen the other one already. So this is just a little comparison to how these things are built in respect to each other. Or how we might paint them differently. A lot of ways we can do things. A lot of ways we can do things. It's looking pretty good. Might get a little more of my orange and yellow together. I'm using my, uh, this would be like your Nick, your Hansa yellow and your transparent pyro orange. Sometimes it's nice to put little pops of color here and there. All this is having a nice 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 little dry i think i will come into my uh, maybe my light green and my viridian several comments on how nice your hair is oh thank you do, do, do. You know, just paint carefully A little bit outside. Sometimes you can come back in a little bit too. I don't have to paint to the edge of paper. A lot of people tape the edge of their paper so that there's a clear framing edge. For the mat. Mm hmm Oh, thank you, Deborah. Let's paint a little bit loose around there. Thank you, Deborah. Now, I'm going to try to make next week's Watercolor Wednesday, too. We're coming back from a trip, and we have a lot of... Driving. Oh, gosh, I don't even want to bug you guys, but there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. <laughs> Tell you someday. And I'll make a draw my life about it. That one acrylic April win. Do you know that uh, uh, Lucy and Desi uh, thing they did on Netflix? And then, like, that showed that one really, like, in crazy week? That's my week. Right now, that's what's going on in my life. You don't know it, but it is. And somehow I'm just like, I'm just going to keep going. Except we're in week four of that week. <laughs> we're in week four of that week. That week never ends. As I didn't our... register as a communist, but, you know. As her daughter would say, it's the week that Not that it wouldn't be okay ends. for you to be that. I'm not here to tell you what system of government to believe in, man. Good Lord. You know. 
I just can't. I just can't. You could call me a communist and I would not be offended. I just, I mean, I very much love where I live, but I'm not here to bag on anybody else. Be like, I'm all about a Star Trek universe. Yeah. Oh, dude, I am. I'm super about a Gene Roddenberry universe. Sounds like children falling up the stairs. It does. They do. Let's see how that's giving us a nice kind of like also diffused green background. All right, that's kind of fun. And you can even maybe come in and what if we add a little bit of every once in a while some of the peacock blue into that, which would be like the phthalo blue. The Skoda Travel Brush is a gift from uh, one of my viewers. Well, really good friend, actually, who also watches the show. Um, and I loves it. I loves it, loves it, loves it. Now, I, want, I don't want this edge to harden up too much. So I'm going to come over here with some water before it sets. Too much. And, and the reason is the Vivivas are a little more like dyes or inks. And so they don't granulate and they don't sit on the paper as much. This is the light green, which in my palette would be the phthalo green with a little bit of the nickel azo yellow or Hansa yellow in it. Any one of the yellows. And we're just painting around the little flower. So I guess I'm really trying to create the acrylic. But with uh, and it's just sort of interesting, and I'm just gonna let it flow and go where it wants to flow it and is go. Interesting. Again, the light green. Just keep going. Um, I don't think we always go over how to do these full kind of backgrounds and things. So this is sort of fun. It's something different. The nice thing also about um, the background green green is if a little yellow blooms into it, we're not going to be that sad. We're not going to be all broke up over it. That's fun. You just keep going. Now, the thing I'm going to have to do is, if you'll notice, I got some on my arm. Yeah. Is I'll have to, I actually probably should turn, I'm going to turn my art around. Otherwise, I'm going to drag my art, my arm all through my art. Okay. It's going to happen. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to change uh, your uh, direction of attack so that you don't drag your arm. You know, so you want to, um, uh, so like I write right to left. So I'll want to sometimes paint, uh, left to right because that's, that's where my, my dominant hand is. If you were left-handed, you might want to start over here and go this way sure. just as a strategy to keep your arm out of paint. I'm not here. Here's my honest feeling about being left-handed or right-handed in art. Um, there is no time in ever, ever, ever you should be made to feel weird about that or strange about that in any way or like somehow super unusual and problematic for you to have to figure, you have to watch it in a mirror and you have to do this. Here's what it is. You do what every artist does. You figure out where your dominant hand is and where your strongest brush stroke is and you lean into it. Okay. Just like I do. You do. Good question here. Uh, Manders asks, are the watercolor sheets you are using from the travel kit you reviewed? Yes. Sherpa? Same sheets. But these are the original sheets. So you could, if you didn't want to buy the whole travel kit, you could buy just the um, 16 color sheets. And 
Which brush is that again? This is the Escoda Travel Brush. Want to see something cool? This is the number 12. This is the La Perla. The La Perlas are like the bomb. And that's what it do. People think it'd be a feminine product in my purse. But it's not. It's a brush. Huh. I'd be fine if it was. It's just not. Been asked that. <laughs> like, huh. like I had some silver case for my, my feminine products. <laughs> huh. <sighs> I mean, at some point, you're just so glad even thinks you're still using them. You're like, oh, no. You're a baller. I'm just like, that's how I roll. See, we're just painting that all in. Isn't that fun? Just move the little toe around. This is just that light green. You could have any light green that you like on your palette and use it. One of the things, so the way acrylics are set up, sometimes if you don't have a color I have, it can make it harder on you. The way most pan watercolors are set up, you have something that's close enough. We can have fun together. Close enough. It's close enough, man. <laughs> with, with watercolor, you can, you know, we're not, okay. First of all, I don't want to mislead you. There's very serious watercolor out there. Serious! But you think oils are serious? Mm. You think acrylics are serious? Mm. You think drawers are serious? Mm. There's some watercolorists out there that are like next level. They're like, they're like avatars. Like they're, they're paint benders. It's just, it's just so... And they're so into it. And they're all into the science and the deep part of it and the flow of it. And I mean, they're into it and... They teach courses, and you're like, what? How are you human? But then, all of a sudden, watercolors, there's this. Fun. Right? Yeah. No, don't go be serious. You can't be. Resources are out there. Help yourself. Be serious. Um... You want to see another review on this product? Uh, Lindsay, the frugal crafter, did one. Oh, I did not. Know. I haven't even seen it. So I'm sending you over there with no idea what Lindsay's with even said. Faith. Well, here's what. I know Lindsay has, you know, Lindsay has ob observations I might not have. Lindsay's a different person. She is. A different artist. And Lindsay might notice different things. And so I well, I want you to have all the information. At least I know Lindsay gives you thoughtful information. She's a thinker. She, she Yeah. She, she's thought about it. She's and also, she's just, her channel is a lot about reviewing products too. Testing and reviewing. And uh, so she's really like tested a lot of stuff, man. Like. I get sent a lot of things, but there's only a few companies that I really, really let send me things because, uh, like, she's only done. A couple I don't want to be bothered, right? huh? She's only done a couple videos, right? Just a few, just a couple, like, just a couple, not too many. It's like about like me. Yeah, like in thousands. Thousands, but she's been on YouTube longer. I'm almost glad I didn't find her when I started out. I only found, like, the the dudes painting that talk like Bob Ross. You know who I'm talking about. A bunch of dudes, they all paint, and they all talk like Bob. Duder Club. Yeah, huh? The Duder Club. The Duder Club. I found a bunch of the Duder Club, and they're all cool artists. But, you know, they talk in that very low... Before SMR was called ASMR, was a very low-key voice. They have that and, chill 70s vibe. Too. Every tree was a happy tree. Ish. Every cloud was a fluffy, happy cloud. And that was really cool. But I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm a mom of three in the middle of a crisis of my life. And I had to paint all the time. And I paint totally differently. And I have a completely different art thought and process. I have something to, like, add here. You had a unique voice yeah, among and, and the voices. Really, the only girl I was finding at the time was Angela Anderson. But she hadn't been online for a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. She had. Yeah. Like I watched that sunflower video, and it's just sunflower video, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then there was Amy Pierce. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Very cool chick. 
um, I think has gone on to Mr. Otter Studio or something like that, ended up doing a kid's channel. Um, weird things that I know. Gosh, I have, I have the weird art. I have weird art YouTube gossip. I never use it. I could have a whole like, <gasps> the tea, the pigment channel where I you dish on other artists. Pigment. But here's, you know, I don't dish on other artists, even though I have the dish. Because you don't want to be dished on? I don't want to be dished on, and I don't think I'd really... I don't think... I think I couldn't be lighthearted about an internet war. I think there would be oh. a plane ticket involved. I got in a kerfuffle with another YouTuber, and they did some stuff that really made me super mad, and I was, like, shopping plane tickets <laughs> to hop over the ocean. Like, not even for a meetup, but to, like, go to somebody's studio and have some face-to-face -face conversation. And so... um <laughs> After reviewing myself and my life and my response, I realized, oh, I'm not, I should never get involved in any of that. <laughs> because the end of my story is going to be Dateline. <laughs> I'm going to be a Dateline special. Oh, no, man. I've like got, I had whole plans. It was a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those just... plans involved me. Yeah. So they did. <laughs> Some of those plans involve crocodiles. It is a moment. <laughs> it's a moment. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm not like one of these, you know how like there's some channels and they get in it and they get in with each other back and forth and they grow by a million subscribers. I don't think I'm that person. I don't think so. I've reflected. And I, I don't feel like I want Dateline to be my future. See. See I like this? to watch Dateline. I don't want to be on Dateline. Don't give her a palette knife. She'll cut an artist. <laughs> well, one that trashes me, yes. <laughs> Gets my mom into a cause a bunch of stroke. I will, but that was like an early blessed lesson that didn't get too big, that kind of just ended and squashed. Yep. And so I was like, think about this. This teaches you something about yourself. It teaches you about you. And I was like, oh, you better not do that. Okay, I'm going to go over here to my uh, Slate Black. Which, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called Slate Black. You would use your Payne's Gray. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Why was that cool? Oh, i got to turn my thing around. It's slightly black. Slate Black. S not slightly black. Slate. Uh. Slate Black. Okay. L like I Slate. Said, I thought it was like slight. No. Like it was a little bit black. I was like maybe black. Whatever, like, Robin. It's slightly black. <laughs> that's a funny <laughs> color name. It, so I'm looking at making a palette like this for myself and for you guys. I'm thinking about it. Um, so, like, if, if you get them and you don't like them, you better tell me how. Another, another paint in that set would be a little bit red. <laughs> oh, man. If we just use, like, vanity names like that, that's so rude. <laughs> I'm just tapping my little brush up and down and kind of glazing over what's here, creating kind of a darker center, if you guys can see. A little bit of a darker center. It's not too bad. Hmm. Back here, there was a burnt sienna and a and a burnt umber. I think I'm going to go into the burnt umber. Maybe a little more into the burnt umber. Oh, it's not even burnt enough. I'm going to come over here into something else. More burnt. Persian blue. Then I'm going to offload it a little bit, and then I so said that's like my ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to come over here into the burnt umber. Great a bit. Okay. So that's what I did. I'm going to rinse out. I think I'm going to just soften this just a bit. I do want it to be a shadow, but not quite so, so strong. So see how I'm lifting that back? Because I felt like I did too much. But I'm still leaving my shadow. Is that possible? Can you do too much? Yeah, you can. Okay. 
You can. I have found those limits before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This, speak from experience. You can totally. And when I was a young artist, my mom thought I lived in those limits. I mean, I swear, like, our whole art relationship was like, did you mean to leave so much white? And then, you know, because I'm a teenager, I was like, Mom, yes, that's how we do it now. <laughs> we leave white. It doesn't all have to be painted. We're artists. Mom, why? Why don't you love my white canvas? <laughs> I think I even called you all mad. <laughs> Man, there's some weird stuff. Although I have to say your graphite figures were angry. They were. Well, I had some feelings. So then um, I have said before, I work to be here. Some people are here. Some people are like Mr. Rogers, and they just live here. They, they, they were born in this neighborhood of peace and calm and everything, right? I was not. I'm a full Xena. I'm like, I earned my way here. You know, like, it was like she used to do paintings that legit you wouldn't want to turn off the lights around. <laughs> Be like, no, not with that painting on the wall. No. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. And but she, my mom would just large. be like, oh, and did you her, mean to do that? Her mom framed everything so that then there'd be like a yeah, 30 yeah. by 40 graphite of this angry person crouched in a corner with one eye kind of sort of <laughs> looking at you. <sighs> and now the same thing happens to me with my daughter and my eldest well, this, I have learned with my children, Spider doesn't come at with, he, he expresses his art very differently. And I clearly doesn't feel like I could weigh on it in a critical manner. So I'm allowed to come in and say anything. <laughs> but, because um, he does 3D modeling and stuff like that. But my eldest child and my youngest daughter, they do art art. And um, yeah, I got to be real careful. And then sometimes I channel my mom. And then I'm like, am I channeling my mom? What are you painting? I am taking the burnt umber and the Persian blue, and I made a bit of a grade blue. And I'm coming here, and I'm taking the toe of the brush, and I'm just tapping it up and down, creating a texture. Don't you see my lovely texture? I see it. Don't you love my lovely texture? And I kind of put a little shadow down here. Because I wanted a little shadow. Got a little away from me, but I don't care. I'm going to keep going. So, yeah, like I would do all this like weird art and my mom would be like, you know, <laughs> what's that? And then I'd enter in shows and then it would win. <laughs> <laughs> Which would just further fuel yeah. cinnamon. And... Into thinking that I knew anything at I, all. I, you did. Yeah, maybe. But you were passionate. I was a little, I was a little, I was a little wound up. A little bit. It's a little wound up. And I had some maybe strong opinions. Stated openly and loudly. <laughs> Repeated. <laughs> and I've, I've, I've long been a tourist in life, so I just sit back and then watch. So it's take true. it all in. Like, wow. It's true. That's really happening. It's happening right now. I'm going to come over and I'm going to get some of my Persian blue, I think. I did not expect that today. No. I, I We definitely did go some places you did not expect. Get some Persian blue here. And to darken this. Create some value. <laughs> I did. I took John lunch places he did not Mary, expect to go. Mary's like, oh, I, ch I channel my mom too. Just, it's the... First time I channeled my mom, my eldest had cut their hair, their hair that was past their bottom. And I did not know how attached I was to their hair until they did that. And then I, I heard my mom, and it, it was happening. It was, she, she was coming out of my mouth. And I knew it. I knew it was happening, but I couldn't stop it. I was like, it was like, it was like that button was fully on. I was just like. <laughs> that horse was Bolting out that gate. And I remember the day I came home, because my mom really loved my strawberry blonde hair, and I remember the day I came home with wine. Because that's what the purple that we had in the 80s was that wine burgundy color, and you have a good purple. You know, you could manic panic your hair, but it, like, washed out in a second. And so I had that purple, and I just was like, I came home and was just like, how, it's my head, it's my head, it's my head. 
You care what's happening to my head. There I am. Losing my mind. Super caring about what happened to my eldest head. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. Just six therapy sessions in, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm handling it like an adult. You know, I have to say, mm. Rahil is the only person I've ever seen make emojis in cursive. Very pretty emojis. <laughs> it's like, you got all the bendy edges. They're not just your usual X underscore capital X. So I put some dark blue in the center, and I've got this lighter kind of color happening on the outside. And I'm kind of okay with that. Kind of all right. I'm not all the way there. I've got my background happening with my yellow. And I'm trying to decide, like, how I want to go through here. You know, I might come back to my yellow ochre, maybe. Let's go back into our yellow ochre. Uh, what other ochres are there? Raw ochre? Oh, yeah. Red ochre? There are ochres in the world that are sacred, and if you see them, um, it, it would at one time it was such a violation you could be killed for it. Well, I just... You know, um, and then, uh, so, so, uh, native people in Aust Australia, Aboriginal people in Australia, uh -huh. um, they have several, ver several ochres and there were huge communications done through ochre and Sienna. And, uh, um, at one point, I mean, like people died over ochre now, now not, but you know, that's, cr you don't think of it as being like that, but it's a big deal. And you, the variety of ochres is incredible. But there's there's supposed to be one that's so red and it's sacred and you're not allowed to see it. Huh. And I can only tell you that because I've only read about it. I haven't seen it. That's why I am still here. And I wouldn't. I would not do it. You would not? No. If peek. some person was like, would you like to go see the sacred ochre that you're not allowed to see, but we can go in and see it? I would be like, I, I would be like, no. None of my business. You, who gives you a pass to see the sacred ochre? You, you don't, I don't think you get a pass. I think it's absolutely done in one. Like nobody gets to see it at all? No, I mean, I think it's, I think it's within the community. They oh, can see it if it's appropriate, but I'm not allowed to see it. And I mean, I'm okay I, with that. I'm not upset. I'm curious. Right? Like, like, like I'm watching that Pam and Tommy thing. And I said the other day, I never watched the tape because it was none of my business. Ever. For real. Never. None of my business. I'm coming in and I'm defining the petals again with a little bit of this um, yellow ochre. We're learning a lot about the Sherpa today. But when I when I started recommending uh, Matisse Derivant, I actually called them to ask them where they sourced their ochre to make sure that they were sourcing it uh, responsibly before I shouted them out. And what I learned is all the art companies are sourcing their ochre responsibly. So. Yay. They are like me. Yay. Well, I mean. Not everything's got to be everybody. Who's sometimes. asleep? I'm working on it. Are you working on being asleep? Am I taking too long? I'm sorry. No. I'm just kind of coming through and uh, adding a little bit more value to the leaves. See how we're doing there? I see it. Sometimes you got to add a little more value. Adam's family values. Boy, I'm going to end up, sometimes I say things and it really sets people off and then they write me very, very angry comments. So if I, ups if I upset you, I'm sorry. She's just monologuing while she's painting. I'm mon well, I mean. And I'm just heckling. I have opinions, but I'm not so completely full of hubris negro that I think every opinion I have is right. I am. I know I many of them will have right. to change. And I will be corrected on some. And you, you know what? I, I'm okay with that. It's okay. I, I can handle it. I will not stand corrected. I will go down fighting the you entire You get corrected way. all the time. We have a teenager. We are corrected all the time. All the time. I can't, just daily. <laughs> Stuff I did not know. And I swear my child come tell me something and I'm like, that can't be true. And, and they're like, they know me so well now. They're like, here are the five fact-checking sites that say it is. It's very strange, the amount of, of like, legal preparation our children bring to a conversation. <laughs> it's like, they have references, ref it's cited <sighs> references in reserve. Like, I'm bringing out. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow. I we have like, a saying around my house, feelings are not, they're all valid, but not every feeling is a fact. Yeah. No. Feelings are not facts. They can be strong and they are real and they are valid and they are impactful. But they are not always facts. Facts are facts. And you can have feelings about facts, but your feelings are not facts. Oh, I'm going to get so much. And every time I state any kind of strong opinion, I get, I get, I get <laughs> so many. You are not allowed to have a strong opinion. Not allowed to have a strong opinion, even as I paint. But this is a very long watercolor, and that's going to happen in a longer watercolor. So I'm still on just the burnt sienna. And what you can see I'm doing here is I'm just outlining these little leaves, right? Now, a crazy thing is going to happen when I come back in with my white lining. It's going to just make the whole thing pop. And so there's this whole thing. And about an hour after the show, after all the pigment has fully settled into the painting, it's a whole other painting too. So that's a weird thing you guys don't ever really get to see. I'm going to bring over some of my red that I have here. And uh, this is just a bright red. I think on here it would be the... Uh, do, 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 do. The crimson, but this one's pigment, and I just want to, it's a little more opaque, so I'm just put it on top. And I'm again doing that little. I'm the center of a sunflower seed. Yep. Kind of dancey dance. I just want a little red in it. I do. Just a little color. Make it so. All right. So now we've got a butterfly. Let's get some clean water. I'm going to keep using the same brush because I'm attached to it now. All right. One brush. Mm. I'm also going to make sure that this is uh, not a white spot next to the wing because that's going to be distracting. Okay. I do want the flowers kind of neat up to the, to the boundary there. All right. Let's begin with a little bit of wet on that wing. I'm not gonna paint inside my white dot. I don't know where Dogs that blue are... came from, but there we go. Dogs are having their day. Okay. Now I'm going to come over to my dusk orange, which is like a pyral orange. I'm going to come in from the center here and push that around. And what I can do is I wipe off on my paper towel and it pulls the moisture out of my brush so I can actually kind of lighten. You guys see how that happens? Yeah. Now, do you know if the travel set is something you can get with other than the spring sheets? <laughs> Or is it just spring sheets? Uh, right I now? don't think the travel set has the spring sheets. They have the original sheets. I think if you wanted to put the spring color set in there or the metallic color set in there, you'd have to switch it out. Ah. Um, but write the company because it's a small company and they're owned by a couple of guys. You just never know. Like maybe they'd be like, yeah, we do any. I don't know. And come here with like a little more of it and it's a little bit damp so you can see it's sort of soft when I when I when I kind of pull it out it's a little bit soft still because the paper's wet where the paper is wet it's going to just keep softening it's not going to be a hard sharp edge which is nice on a butterfly wing And now I'm going to uh, come in with my crimson. Mm. Crimson. All 
right? Right there at the center and kind of leading out and coming out the crimson. Why am I that excited about it? I don't know. <laughs> crimson! Very into it. I'm going to go over to my burnt sienna. No, actually, maybe my yellow ochre. Maybe my yellow ochre, actually. Start out with my yellow ochre, and I'm going to go right into where I have uh, fur. Get that a little bit wet. I'm going to come get a little of my blue. Mesmerized by the painting. Are you? Or is everybody? Amy says. Oh, thank you, Amy. Oh, it was Irene. Thank you, Irene. Just putting a little blue in there. Because we have that nice little pop of blue on the wing. I'm getting a little more like kind of maybe a dark little pop of blue. Up here at the corner. And that really kind of needs to dry for a second, right? For us to be able to do anything else. Now, for you, I want you to let it just naturally dry. But, John, if you'll hand me my hair dryer, I'm going to, oh. oh, no, it's right here. I'm going to artificially dry it. Artificial you don't do that. Dry. I'll do that. You don't do that because it, you want to let your paint just settle and soften and merge and meld into the paper. But we're live, so I'm going to just dry it. All right. And that's what we'll do is dry it. And the reason that you normally want to let that do it by itself is that uh, watercolor has a, a really neat way of uh, drying and having the pigment capillary out through the paper. So. Mm. Wasn't that fun? That was fun. I guess I'm like, where it's fun. Let's come over to our slate black. And I'm going to kind of bring some little slate black moments in there. Come along the wing here. All right. Make a little dot into the wing. And something kind of folding under the eye. And then maybe even a little bit at the eye. And come around here. Just get a little bit of slate. Like your pain's gray. Right. I hear a lot of dogs playing. Oh, they've been over here at my feet this entire time. Just, just playing. Uh huh. I'm just gonna come in here and adding a little bit of shadow there. Just these little details of the wings. We're in the little edges of the wings. Yep. And then while we're here, uh, we'll rinse out. And I'm going to get, oh gosh, a dusk orange dot. I'm going to mix it into my crimson so it's kind of dark. And so that's sort of in those wings. All right. Now we're going to dry that. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, dry, dry. And then once that dry, dry, dries, she'll be able to add the next little layer on there. Put those, uh, she has to get 
get the little droplets to go away. So, we'll just... Look, together, we'll watch paint dry. See, it's drying. You can see it turning opaque. And now, look, we watched paint dry together. I'm going to put out my fluid white paint that we talked about in the beginning. This is just like white gouache. You could do a Posca pen. Uh, you could do the new credit color acrylic pens. You could do any of the pens you like. I'm going to go ahead and get a little detail brush. Now, wasn't that a peacock moth? That was a peacock moth, as we learned. It's not a butterfly. No, it's not. I'm just dotting the little antenna out. Yay, antenna. Make little dots on the inside of the, there we go, inside oh. of the sunflower. Dots. Little bit of dots. They make a big difference. They create some dimensionality on there that we really need. They really do. You know, I could have reserved them with frisket or painted it out a different way. Every time you come to painting, you have, you have a choice to make. Different decisions that you could do. Right? Different decisions. But you just decide what's your right choice in that moment. What is my right choice in this moment, in this watercolor painting moment, in this other painting moment? I'm just dotting up and down on the toe of the brush and letting some of the dots be big. Some of the dots are small. You can see that contrast starts to really give us a nice little moment here. Making some little patterning out. A right. little bit of the seeds, maybe have a little light on them. Mm. <clears throat> Adding some highlights to the... Yeah, make some highlights to these leaves. And those little pops add something. Everything has a little dimension. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. It took me a I'm couple seconds to add some white to the outside edge here. What? Uh, so, a little white there. A little white there. So, so, so? Uh, I think it's uh, Mitchy from Papua New Guinea. Hi, from Papua New Guinea. Who says, will she paint more in acrylic to watercolor from Acrylic April? I can. If you guys are into it, I can. I love learning some skills. I can. It, it does make it a little bit easier for me because I'm not having to redesign. I think that would be good if you did more of this. You could do a, you could do watercolored acrylic April. What, you could do acrylic April watered down. I'll put a poll up about, uh, you know, maybe like 
you know what I we could do or something maybe it's like rhetorical know. polls yeah they really are it's like you, you, by the time you pull it you know you're gonna do it well i meant like you know maybe what we were painting i like this one i've got some other ones that felt like they would be fun to paint in watercolor some of them really feel like they'd be fun to paint in watercolor and some of them feel like they would be like really hard to paint in watercolor Let's look at that overhead, see how that's starting to look. Oh, just got the thing. So I know just like seeing that all which direction. You know. I think it's good. I think it's great. They agree. They would like to see your acrylic April watered down. It's fun to do. Just playing with playing with little elements. You can spend as much time on something as you want. You're not going to be sorry that you did. You know, it's okay to stop. I'm going to add a little bit of dots here, kind of implying that like light is maybe coming down <clears throat> across the little pod. A highlight on that side of the butterfly, perhaps. I don't know. I feel pretty good about this. I think we kind of got the gist. Yeah. And I really tried not to change too much what the original design was that I'm working from, so you guys could see, like, how they're different. You can see. Just going to sign in the acrylic. There you go. All right. And this is a pretty big piece, like if you think about 9 by 12 in your little watercolor world. But that's how I would do that in watercolor. And we could do another one that I would do that in watercolor. That would be cool. They would like to see that. Oh, my goodness, guys. Thank you so much. I so appreciate your support. Um, especially during a month like April where everything is really crazy and I'm trying to make sure that my watercolor family gets the love that they deserve and I'm trying to make sure that all my business partners deserve get the love that they deserve because we got to go to NAMTA. Yep. You know, and give some love to Savoir Fair and Abstract yep. Acrylic and Sal and uh, saint Elier and Fabriano, McPherson's. When I, when I shine some light and love down on them, sparkle, 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 sparkles. Doesn't that sound cool. good? Yeah. All right, guys, I'm a little, I'm a little tuckered, but you guys are a little tuckered. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon.